In this lecture, I'd like to derive the kinematics equations by using Newton's second law and assuming a constant acceleration and a constant mass. This supports sections 2.5 in your Matter and Interactions textbook. Okay, so let's talk about the constant force case from Newton's second law. So if you assume that F is equal to dp dt, or the time rate of change in the momentum, that could also be written as F is equal to ma, the mass times the acceleration, if the mass is constant. Now there's some notable cases when you might have a constant force. And you might have already heard about these in your 1000 level physics class. These are times like projectile motion, when you have a constant mass and you're ignoring air resistance, and you're operating here on planet Earth under the acceleration of gravity. In that case, F is equal to mg, and since g is always 9.8 meters per second squared down, right, then you definitely have, under those circumstances, a constant force case if you're ignoring um, air resistance. So if you've got that kind of thing going on, then you can easily solve some differential equations by straight integration. And we can obtain, when we do that, the, what I hope, are pretty familiar at this point, kinematics equations that you've seen in 1000 level physics. So now that I've outlined what I'm going to do in this lecture, let's go. All right, so let's just look at one dimension. We're going to assume that everything is in the x direction to derive these kinematics equations. But remember that, as always, I could do this in any given direction. I've made it completely general here, for example, okay? And then, since all the directions would be independent of one another, you'd end up with the same equations, basically, just with y or z components instead of x, okay? So bear in mind that, that I'm doing it here in 1D, but you can really think about this as a vector form. Okay, here we go. We're assuming the acceleration and the mass are constant. Remember that the definition of the acceleration is equal to the time rate of change of the velocity. So if I say that m times ax, right, the mass times the acceleration in the x direction, I can also rewrite that as m times dvx dt, the time rate of change of the velocity, right? Okay, if I take that equation that I just derived there on that top line or talked about on that line, I can see here that since the mass is constant and it's on both sides of the equation, that I can just cancel it out, it divides out. And that leaves me with dvx dt is equal to the acceleration, which is just the definition of acceleration, really. Now I'm going to multiply both sides of that equation by dt. When I do that, I end up with dvx is equal to ax times dt. Now I have a form here that I can solve. I'm going to integrate both sides. I'm going to assume that my time runs from 0 to t, some later time t. But we start our clock at t is equal to 0. At that time, I'm not going to assume that the velocity is constant. I'm going to say, okay, it can start at some initial velocity in the x direction, and then I'm going to integrate to vx, some later velocity. So then I end up with the integral from v initial in the x to vx of dvx is equal to the integral from 0 to t of ax dt. When I integrate both sides, integrating the left-hand side just gives me vx, which I then evaluate from vix to vx. So on the left-hand side, I get vx minus vix. Now on the right-hand side, when I integrate dt, I get t, which I then evaluate from 0 to t, which gives me t minus 0. So here I have ax times t minus 0, or simply ax times t. So that gives me the equation vx minus vix, my initial velocity, is equal to ax times t. And I can rearrange that equation to say that the velocity in the x direction at some later time t is equal to the initial velocity in the x, vix, plus the acceleration times the time, ax times t. This is basically just the definition of the average acceleration rearranged, but it's also one of our um, kinematics equations from our 1000 level class. All right, so now we're going to take the definition of the velocity and work from there. Still assuming that the acceleration and mass are constant, okay? That's a very important assumption, the constant force assumption. So remembering our definition of velocity, vx is equal to dx dt, the time rate of change of your position. Now I can do the same thing that I did on the other slide. 
I can multiply both sides of that equation by dt. So I start off with dx dt is equal to vx. I multiply both sides by dt, and I end up with dx is equal to vx times dt. Now, to solve that little differential equation, I'm going to integrate both sides. I'm going to assume that my x starts off at some initial position and goes to some later final position. So I'm integrating dx from x initial to x final. I'm going to start off yet again with my clock at t is equal to 0 and then stop my clock at some later time t and see what's going on. So I'm integrating vx dt from 0 to t. But hey, I had that equation from the other slide, right? vx was equal to v initial in the x plus ax times t. If I plug that in for vx, it should work just fine because it's valid here, right? So then I'm integrating from 0 to t my initial velocity in the x direction plus ax times t, and I'm integrating that with respect to t. So when I integrate vix, which is a constant with respect to t, I get vix times t, right? And then I would evaluate that from 0 to t, and so I would end up with just vix times t minus 0 or vix times t. Now moving on to the second term there, the plus ax dt, when I integrate that ax t, I get 1 half ax t squared. Then I evaluate that from 0 to t, and so I would end up with 1 half ax times t squared minus 0, or just 1 half ax t squared. So finally, looking at the left-hand side and the right-hand side and combining that, I end up with x final minus x initial equals v initial x times t plus 1 half ax times t squared. And that should remind you of that equation from your 1000 level physics class, right? That's one of the kinematics equations. All right, so there's another one that gets um, talked about a lot in 1000 level physics classes. I'm going to derive that one for you too. You might remember this one, right? It's the only one without time in it. Vfx squared is equal to Vix squared plus 2ax delta x. In other words, the final velocity in the x direction squared is equal to the initial velocity in the x direction squared plus 2 times the acceleration times the displacement delta x. Okay, I'm not going to integrate to solve this one. It's a little simpler than that. What I can do is I can just take the two equations I've already derived and do some um, uh, combination of those algebraically. And if I do that, I can derive them. So using the equation that I derived on the last slide, x final minus x initial, which is delta x, is equal to vix times t plus 1 half ax t squared. This is my starting point. Now, I'm going to take my other kinematics equation, right, which was basically vf is equal to vi plus at. I'm going to rearrange that, right, so I have vfx minus vix is equal to ax times t. I'm going to um, solve for t, okay, so that my time is equal to vf minus vi over a, okay? Now, I'm going to take that time that I solve for using my, basically, uh, definition of <laughs> acceleration equation or average velocity equation. I'm going to take that equation, right, rearranging for t using that, and plug it back into the other kinematics equation, okay? So when I plug that in for t, I end up with delta x is equal to v initial in the x times what I solve for for t, which is vf minus vi over a, right? plus 1 half a, and then this was t squared, but now I have 1 half a times vf minus vi over a squared, okay? All right. Now, if you think about these terms here, they both have acceleration in the denominator, linear acceleration in the denominator. If you look here, you can see that the acceleration is a denominator on this first term on the right-hand side, and then at the second term on the right-hand side, I have a times 1 over a squared. So the a here in the numerator would cancel out with one of the a's in the denominator. So I'd end up with just a linear acceleration term in the denominator of the second term. So if I multiply everything through by that acceleration, I can get it out in the denominator on the right-hand side. That leaves my left-hand side as delta x times my acceleration on the left. And then it cancels out the acceleration denominator on the right. If I solve algebraically for what the right-hand side would be, I'm going to multiply through by everything, right? So then from this first term, I end up with v initial times v final minus v initial squared. Okay, so that's my first term, right all there. Now for the second term, 
I end up with one half times vf minus vi squared. And when I expand that square, I end up with plus one half times vf squared plus vi squared minus two vf vi. Okay, so that's just expanding my square. Okay, so now I'm going to um, add all these terms up together and we'll see what we get here on the right hand side. Okay, so here I have v initial times v final outside, right? But then on the inside of this parenthesis, I have one half times negative two vf vi. Well, the two cancels out with the one half and that gives me a minus vf vi. So basically I have plus vf vi minus vf vi and it cancels out, so that's handy. Okay, now looking at this, I have minus vi squared. But then on the inside of my parenthesis, I have plus one half vi squared. So if I combine those two things, then I end up with minus one half vi squared. And then the only thing I have left, right, is plus one half vf squared. So when I combine those things, then what I end up with on the right hand side is one half times vf squared minus vi squared. And that's it, that's my right hand side. And then my left hand side is still delta x times the acceleration. Now all I have to do is multiply both sides by two. That cancels out the one half, right? And then I would have two times my displacement times my acceleration is equal to vf squared minus vi squared. Now if I just add vi squared to both sides, I'm done. vf squared is equal to vi squared plus two a delta x. And that's the last kinematics equation that you might remember from your 1000 level physics class, okay? So I've derived the kinematics equations for you, okay? Maybe they were just presented to you in your 1000 level physics class and you were told to trust them, but you don't have to trust them anymore, all right? Here's the proof. We'll do some examples using these equations in another lecture. Until then, I hope you understood everything, but if not, please ask and I'll see you in class.